welcome. Okay, so we are getting started today with Dr. Richard Horowitz. If you want to know how you can get better, this is the place for you. So fasten your seatbelt because we are going to learn and grow together with Dr. Richard Horowitz. And I don't know if the music is going to start, but Brian, anytime. Are we ready to go? If you're in need of hope, you know where I'll be. I'll be right here, right here. And when you need a it's a good friend, thing we can't be seen while we're not talking. <laughs> I'll be right here, right here waiting for you. This is the place you can always turn to when you need a friend. The Lillian McDermott Show. To reach out to Lillian, visit her on the web at whenyouneedafriend.com. Now let's all learn together. Here's Lillian McDermott. Hello, my listening friend. It's so nice we can meet each other on the air on this beautiful best day ever. And for those of you who are new to the Little McDermott Radio Show, the purpose of the show is to provide a safe place where you can go to when you need a friend. It is my commitment to provide alternative ways to heal, and it is my mission to make awareness, responsibility, and truth a part of our everyday life. And I hope you, my listening friend, will feel empowered to live the life of your dreams. Okay, so I'm going to warn you right now, you're going to want to put this number down, write it down, put it in your car, put it anywhere you want. But today we're giving another book away. And every time I give away this book, I get calls for like three days. And so I'm going to make it the fifth. No, no, no. I'm going to make it the 10th caller or texture. <laughs> but if you call, please leave a message because if you don't leave a message, then I don't know what you want. So fit the 10th caller or texture to call for this book because if you want to get better, this is the book for you. You know, so many of us are going through life not knowing what is causing our dis-ease. Sometimes we eat foods that cause us to get bloated, congested, and even give you a rash. Those, that, that's your body talking to you. Listen up, because today we have world-renowned author of How Can I Get Better, Dr. Richard Horowitz, and that's the book we're going to be giving away. So mark my words, this is one you're going to want. Dr. Richard Horowitz will teach us how to discover why we are reacting it's a he told me about this and he's been talking to me about this for a couple of months now about histamine reactions in our body and today we're going to talk about how we can heal our gut can you believe that today on the little McDermott radio show we're going to talk about how to heal your gut and for those of you who do not know how important our gut is then Fasten your seatbelts because we're going to learn and grow because it is our sole purpose in life to give and receive love and knowledge. And I am grateful that Dr. Richard Horowitz is back to do just that. Welcome, Dr. Horowitz, to the Living Dermot Radio Show. Thank you, Lillian. Great pleasure to be here again. It is a pleasure for all of us. Every time you're on, Dr. Horowitz, I don't know what you're doing. But the phone, my phone, 407, did I give the number away yet? Oh, yeah, it's a teaser, 407-373-5959. That's 407-373-5959. I may want to warn you, you may want to start calling now and keep calling until you get that 10th call. But I'm not going to answer the phone just yet. At the end of the show, we figure out who's called and who's the winner. So share a little bit about your background, Dr. Horowitz. And what makes you so fabulous? <laughs> um, well, um, I, I can't really talk about that. You'd have to speak to my grandmother and my mother about the other <laughs> comment you said. But um, as far as my background, I'm a board certified internist. I live in the Hudson Valley, New York. Um, I moved up here over 30 years ago. And at the time, I didn't realize I was moving into one of the most Lyme endemic areas of the United States. So. Uh, as an internist, which is kind of like a medical detective, you you know look for clues for patients to try and figure out why they're sick. I ended up going on this journey where I've seen now over 12,000 chronically ill people. And of course, I've seen people with Lyme disease and tick-borne, but interestingly enough, 
people would come in with other diseases like chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, autoimmune diseases, including GI diseases like Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis or uh, reflux. And interestingly enough, in the search for why these people stayed ill, we discovered that the gut actually plays a very important part in keeping people healthy. And mm -hmm. they talk about it in medical school. You know, we, we learned that digestive disorders create, you know, 70 million people in the United States have some type of digestive disorder. It's mm -hmm. like the second largest reason why people are absent from the workplace. And a lot of people have irritable bowel. They have reflux disease called GERD. Uh, they may have ulcers, inflammatory bowel, uh, celiac disease. So there are some common reasons why people's gut are not working, but other reasons are people have been eating the wrong foods. They may have mm -hmm. taken antibiotics that got rid of the good bacteria in their gut. They have an overgrowth of yeast in their colon. Um, they're sensitive to certain foods where they release histamine or inflammatory cytokines, molecules that make you sick. They give you headaches, uh, joint pain, uh, fog you out with cognitive issues. So it's important for people to realize that the gut is one of the most important organs we have. It's not just about digestion. It's where the neurotransmitters for your mood exist. Um, it deals with certain parts of your nervous system. Um, your immune system is there. Um, and a lot of times people just don't give it enough really credibility as far as how we have to take care of our gut to stay healthy. Wow. That, that, that's so much. And for those of you who just listened to Dr. Richard Horowitz, it's just going to get better from here. So I know that many people tell me, slow down, slow down. Well, you can listen to the show whenever you want and you can pause it and listen and write notes and all of that. We've, we've got you. We got your back. We got your back. So today we're going to talk about how to heal our gut. And what are the histamine reactions that could potentially be causing you a reaction in your body that you don't even know? I've had people that are red in the face, have rashes on their body, go, I'm not allergic to anything. It's time to take inventory. Listen to your body. We're going to continue our conversation with Dr. Richard Horowitz when we return worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com. We'll be right here waiting for you. I'm telling you, Dr. Horowitz, I hear people say to me, oh, I don't have any issues with food, but then they have diabetes or they're popping an axiom or they're doing, you know, all that. Um, I do want to talk about these, block, these acid blockers and, um, and I want to share with you a story and I'll probably, you know, I'll, I'll share it now and maybe we can bring it into the, the show. But when I was 19 years old, by the time I was 19 years old, I, was, I had been rushed to the emergency room many, many, many times. And they did a, it felt like appendicitis. And they did, um, eventually did a GI, they had me eat eggs, egg whites, and mm -hmm. they wanted to see my, how I absorbed it and the digestion. They realized that I was a slow processor of food and I didn't have enough acid in my stomach is what they said. Right. Or too much acid, I'm sorry, too much acid. And so they started giving me acid block blockers at the age of 19. But one doctor said to me, which I kind of like, because you made your body doesn't make enough acid to produce, uh, to digest meat. That's what he said to me. But I didn't think anything of it. Here we are later on, I gave up meat and it, it made me feel a lot better. What do you say to people that are told that they're not producing enough acid to do something or later on say you have too much acid, which is what I was told one time and then the next time I was told I didn't. Right. So, it, and it's something we definitely should talk about on the air, but the thing is, is that the drugs that they're using, like the proton pump inhibitors, mm -hmm. like Prilosec and the rest, they can be useful for people that have a very severe inflammatory condition in the esophagus called Barrett's esophagus, which is precancerous. So it's, you know, it can be very helpful in that case. But the problem is, is that a lot of times they've now shown, in fact, that the proton pump inhibitors don't really give complete relief to people who have this. And they've now been associated with cardiovascular risk and dementia. Wow. So in, including like you're not absorbing your minerals correctly. You could get osteoporosis. Um, it can lead to resistant pneumonia in the hospital. Oh, here we go. <laughs> you can text Lillian McDermott or leave her a voicemail at 407. 373-5959. Once again, here's Lillian. 
And welcome back to the McDermott Radio Show, where we learn on and off the air. This is one, you know, I don't, I don't want for you, my listening friends, to feel excluded from these conversations, but I want to encourage you to go to whenyouneedafriend.com, click onto my YouTube video so you can watch the entire on and off the air, because sometimes we talk about things off the air that we don't on the air, and I want to encourage you to feel free that if, uh, if, if you want to sit down and, and write some notes Dr. Horowitz will share information off the air as well. That it's it's crucial. So this time I'll share a little bit. I had shared about when I was younger. Um, I was rushed to the emergency room, and they thought it was appendicitis. But every time it was gastritis. So so many people have um, these conditions that we just think is part of the body. We don't realize there's a cause for this. So let's talk about the micro, the gut. Let's talk about the gut. Give us a lesson on gut microbiome 101. Right. So the microbiome are over a hundred trillion microbes, a hundred trillion, right? Wow. Not million, not billion, trillion microbes that are in our gut. They've actually reported that there are 10 times more of these microbial cells in your body than human cells, which means actually you're 90% made up of bacteria, if you want to think about it from that perspective. <laughs> okay. And, and what these different bacteria in the microbiome do is they have a very important role in providing essential vitamins. They fight pathogens like salmonella and certain infectious diseases. They keep the immune system in balance. They've been shown to modulate autoimmune disease like multiple sclerosis and rheumatoid arthritis. There were recent studies showing, for example, that Clostridium species were associated with MS and a species of bacteria in the gut, Prevotella was associated with rheumatoid arthritis. Amazing. So in other words, it's not just that, oh, I got rheumatoid arthritis or MS. They're, they're now discovering that these bacteria may be playing a role in inflammation. They're modulating hormones. They found people who are diabetic and don't make enough uh, insulin. You can put these new bacteria that make insulin in the gut and reverse diabetes and metabolic syndrome. Um, they've shown it relates to cardiovascular risk. Your heart attack risk is related to what these bacteria are in the gut. Um, Parkinson's, schizophrenia, psychiatric diseases have been linked up to this. Um, yes. Cancer risk. So, so in other words, all of these different things, not just Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, things that are actually inflammatory problems with the gut, it turns out that these bacteria in the gut are quite important so a healthy microbiome appears to be the key for many of these chronic diseases, and we have to care for it properly. So here's the deal, Dr. Horowitz. Many of us, when we get a diagnosis, we go, oh, that's it. We got a diagnosis now. Let's take a pill. We don't have to look any further. But we are creating our disease by the choices we make, right? So we have to be careful because... We use a lot of antibiotics in the United States. Mm -hmm. and, and by the way, so do I when I treat Lyme. But I make sure that I'm replacing with over 300 billion of these healthy bacteria every day. So, you know, doctors, if you take 10 days of an antibiotic for an upper respiratory infection, people don't realize that you're wiping out some of the really essential microbiome of these good bacteria in your gut. So it's very important for people to realize that a high fiber diet with proper fruits and vegetables. Um, eating a Mediterranean style diet uh, with extra virgin olive oil. These are very important parts of the diet because the more fruits and vegetables you get into your diet, the healthier your microbiome. They've shown, for example, that fermented foods can be very healthy for keeping the microbiome um, in good shape in your gut. But you do have to be careful because fermented foods yes. can cause histamines. So that's right. And that's what, you know, last time we talked, Dr. Horowitz, and I was like, Oh my gosh, why did I have to look at this? Because now I have to report on it. Okay, so you said, we, we had a conversation, I was sharing with you how I was feeling, and you said, you know what, Lily, you need to look at the histamine diet. You gave me Amy Myers' website. Um, we've reached out to Amy Myers as well. And um, I looked at what you sent me uh, on the histamine diet, and I said, not my avocado, not my tomato, not my eggplant. Why, why, why did you do that? And so I started looking at this and it said that fermented food for people that have histamine reactions is a big no-no. So explain a little bit about we're damned if we do and we're damned if we don't. What do we do? 
Right. So you want to understand um, where, for example, if you're someone that has headaches and migraines that you've not been able to figure out why you keep having them, um, you can't fall asleep easily. You're dizzy all the time. Um, you have anxiety, resistant nausea or vomiting. Um, you're flushing. Your nasal passages are congested. You're wheezing. You have asthma. You're itching. You have rashes. These are all symptoms of histamine release. Mm. So it's very, very important for people to realize that if you're complaining, for example, of allergies and sneezing and asthma and eczema, it's very likely that you're probably histamine sensitive. My wife used to affectionately call me itchy richy because <laughs> every time I would eat the wrong foods, I would be itching. So there's this, there's a way to tell, by the way, if you have histamine release, it's called dermatographism. You take your nail and you, on your forearm, you basically make a mark like, correct, you can do it actually on the other side of your arm where you're going to write, for example, an R and L for Lillian. Mm -hmm. And if within 10 seconds, a wheel, like a mark comes up, like a rash, quickly. That usually means that you're histamine sensitive and you're releasing histamine quickly from the cells that are in your skin. I'm good. So are, I, I'm just saying I'm good right now. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, but, so that, that's one way that you can know, but I've been able to get off my asthma medicines. Like I don't use my asthma sprays um, ever since I've been able to get off histamine releasing foods. Mm -hmm. When I got on a hypoglycemic diet, I used to wake up with headaches every morning. I didn't realize that the amount of sugar and carbohydrates in my diet was just too much for how I was feeling. Wow. So people need to listen to their body. They need to listen carefully that after you eat a meal, if you fall asleep shortly afterwards, that could be hypoglycemia. Mm -hmm. If you get gas and bloating shortly after eating food, well, that could be, for example, that you've got a yeast overgrowth and you might've eaten too much sugar mm -hmm. or you have SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, which many people have in the United States in part from using these acid suppressing drugs. Yeah. So listening to the body, oh, I just ate something and now I'm sneezing. Mm -hmm. I have nasal congestion, I'm itching. The key is listening to your body. The problem is, is that some of these foods have delayed hypersensitivity reactions, meaning you may not get it for hours or one to two days later. And that's why it's necessary when you're doing allergy testing, you don't just do immediate allergy testing called IgE, you do delayed allergy testing called IgG. And there are laboratories that will do this. Some are by blood, some are by saliva. You can see allergists that will do what's called RAS testing on the skin. There are many ways to evaluate this, plus checking histamine in your blood. So oh, you many of my histamine? You can check yes. the histamine in your blood? What's that called? So the test is actually doing a serum histamine level. And also there are markers of a disease called mast cell activation disorder or mastocytosis. So if you're someone who has diarrhea and vomiting and you're itching and you have low blood pressure and you can't figure out why, you can check to see histamine levels in the blood. And there are two markers called tryptase and chromogranin A. Tryptase Histamine and chromogranin A are markers of mast cell activation, and they will tell you if you're one of these people that your asthma, your low blood pressure, your migraines, your resistant dizziness, your vomiting, um, your GI symptoms may in fact be due to you're releasing too much histamine. Okay, so with that, th this is great information, Dr. Horowitz. And for those of you who would like a, a copy of his book, uh, How Can I Get Better?, it's right. How can I get better is the name of the book. You be the 10th caller or texter. He has a 16 step uh, way that you can heal yourself. You can take it to your doctor and say, Hey, I want to follow this protocol. Uh, you know, Dr. Richard Horowitz is hard to come by. He's got a waiting list of 700 people. So if you're the lucky ones that are in there, you might be seen, but you know, another way that you can help yourself is by getting his book and we are giving a book away be the 10th caller or texter 407-373-5959 caller or you can call 10 times if you want just make sure that you call leave a message or text and just text the name of the book how can i get better and so dr horowitz there's so much that we don't know we don't know and i it becomes very apparent when you come on the show how, how little we do know so let's talk about the histamine because i had mentioned that you know um there's a lot of uh iron there is so there's iron so you can't have um 
spinach, avocado, tomatoes, and eggplants. Those were the four. I feel like I'm singing the song. These are a few of my favorite things. Okay, so, um, but there's also fermented food like pickles and all of that. Tell us why, why do we have to give these things up? Right, so it doesn't mean you absolutely have to give them up. What okay. it means is, if you're someone, for example, that complains of, I'm tired after meals, I'm getting frequent headaches, I'm itching, I have migraines, I have asthma, um, I have unexplained nausea, vomiting, and abdominal cramps. I've got hives and nobody can figure out why. I have difficulty breathing through my nasal passages or I'm flushing. If you have those symptoms, you have to start looking into the relationship of food. Now, it could be hypoglycemia, blood sugar swings, mm -hmm. meaning after you eat these foods, you fall asleep. Some people will say midday, I get dizzy, I get palpitations, I'm starting to yawn and feel like I'm falling asleep. I get mm -hmm. anxious, I get hangry, I start getting irritable when I don't eat. Yeah. That's hypoglycemia, but sugar can also cause candida, so you might have gas and bloating after foods. And also notice you're tired, or it could be histamine, right? Mm -hmm. So again, with the histamine, when I ate, for example, I had, um, I recently was appointed to the Federal yes. Signal Working Group. Congratulations. In this past week. So I decided to have a raspberry Belgian beer, right, as a celebration. Within five minutes of basically having this fermented beer, right, I started itching a little bit. I only had a little bit. There goes my itchy. itchy. So that's how histamine sensitive I am. So oh. ferment, you have to listen to your body and look at the list of histamine foods. Amy Myers has a very good site on Mind Body Green mm -hmm. that people can go to and they can read what Amy wrote about this because she talks about fermented alcoholic beverages, fermented foods, um, cured meats like bacon, salami, pepperoni. Um, which are carcinogens, which are carcinogens. Correct. Um, dried fruits, citrus fruits. I mean, you know, it's very healthy, of course, to have citrus in your diet, but histamine sensitive people will have an itch problem using citrus or aged cheeses, right? Including goat cheese. Certain nuts like walnuts, which are very healthy, monounsaturated fatty acids, cashews and peanuts, right, will cause it. So you have to look at the list and see do I have these symptoms? Do I notice after eating food that I'm tired or of gas or bloating or I'm cramping or I get diarrhea? Those are the clues that you may want to look at your diet and see if you need to get off, do an elimination diet, get off sugar, get off dairy, get off wheat, get off gluten, take a look at the histamine foods, get tested for these things. That will really help. Um, to discover if you have this problem. But you said you don't have to take get rid of them for long. So is it a short period of time, Dr. Horowitz? It's a rotation diet. You can get off for anywhere between one to several months, and then you introduce them back every few days, and you uh, listen to your body carefully. Okay, so there is hope. But we got to do the work, you know. Uh, so we're going to continue our conversation with Dr. Richard Horowitz. Let me remind you that the 10th caller or texter will 407-373-5959 will get a copy of this book. And so start your dial in anytime. This is Lilla McDermott. We're going to be right here waiting for you worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com. There you go. Oh my gosh. This, this was a shock for me, Dr. Horowitz. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it because I'm already very limited to what I can eat. And so I, I don't eat a lot of meats, but I notice that the histamine diet calls for that it's okay to eat some meat. So let's talk about the foods we can eat that don't respond to the histamine. Right. So, um, and we'll discuss this on the air, but yes, yes you can eat there are low histamine foods like freshly cooked meat, poultry, um, freshly caught fish. The thing is, is it has to be fresh. Mm -hmm. When the food sits around for a couple of days, it starts to produce histamine. What about so frozen? Really Frozen's okay. Um, in the case of like poultry and stuff, you can do it. But it's mainly eating like gluten-free. Like I love quinoa because quinoa is a whole grain. Mm -hmm. um, it will balance blood sugars. Um, you can use certain fruits like apples and kiwis, but people who are, for example, hypoglycemic, they shouldn't eat watermelon and grapes, even though they're low histamine. So what you have to understand is you have to know, even though certain foods are low histamine, 
sometimes they may be too high in sugar and you may end up getting yeast overgrowth or blood sugar swings. So you have to really listen, take, do a food diary. Doing a food diary, listing what you're eating and listening to your body, but, but you can eat. It's not, you know, most of the um, vegetables, except tomatoes, spinach, avocados, eggplant, almost all the vegetables are okay on this list, right? So it's basically a diet getting away from the grains, right? Getting off of dairy, but eating fresh meats, poultry, fish, um, some fruits, many vegetables, olive oil is fine. Coconut oil is fine if you're not sensitive to coconut, which mm -hmm. I happen to be. Oh, um, you. Yeah, I am. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, I've so become sorry. sensitive to many of these so foods sorry. over time. I um, am so sorry about that. So, um, I, I mean, I can, noticed bananas are in there that, that are um, histamine releasing foods. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, it, you know, and bananas also are a problem for people with hypoglycemia. We have a lot of people get headaches on bananas because they swing the blood sugars just way too much. Mm. Hyperglycemia or hypo? Hypo, hypo, hypo. low. Got in it. other words, it's, it's a high carb food and therefore you secrete more insulin and that mm -hmm. happens to bring down the blood sugar. So it like overcompensates. So as I was looking at this, I realized that I'm, I'm eating a histamine diet. I have many of the things with the exception of the, the meats, um, have, you know, like I have walnuts, <laughs> I have um, cashews. Those are my meats. Um, so could that well, given, be it's listening now? Do you, do you have resistant migraines or symptoms that you've not been able to get rid of? The only time I get headaches is because I was rear ended in, uh, on, in June. Um, and that's the, but when I started eating this way, my headaches went away. I used to get, I used to take Tylenol every day just in case I got a headache because mm -hmm. I would get a headache every day. And, um, that was my life before doing the show. And uh, now if I get a headache, I, I take uh, inventory of my day. I haven't eaten or I didn't drink enough water or maybe I'm feeling stressed and I do things to kind of alleviate that. But I haven't taken, um, you know, anything for, with the exception of the accident um, for headaches. But I do, I still get reactions. I take vitamin C. I just switched from uh, ascorbic vitamin C to whole food plant-based vitamin C uh, for asthma reactions. And that's what I take. I got off of Zolaire. I got off of, of um, Nexium. I got off of um, all the, you know, all the oral inhalers, um, pills, um, Advair. I, I mean, I've, I've taken them all and rescue yeah. inhalers and I switched it with vitamin C and that seems to do the trick. But could I be eating things to cause a reaction? Yes, I mean, my asthma is significantly better off histamine foods. I do not need my rescue inhalers off histamine foods. I still like Singulair. I think Singulair is a very good. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. What, yeah, do you think... Have you ever taken um, mega doses of vitamin C? I've taken a few, I take a few grams a day normally. I take up to about three grams a day. Ascorbic or a plant based? It's a buffer. Ah, okay. Is that good? Because I was told to just do whole food plant based. It's helpful. It is okay, so Here's here we Lula. go. Here we go. Welcome back to the Little McDermott Radio Show, where we always learn and grow with one another. And you can hear us worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com. I am so thrilled. I'm, this, this show has been such a great teacher for me. I've completely, the woman who started this race or the show a long time ago, six and a half years ago, is not the same woman that is on this journey today. And I owe it to wonderful teachers like Dr. Richard Horowitz that have been on the show. The list is overwhelmingly honoring to think of all the wonderful teachers that I've had on the show. And so this is where we stop and this is where I learned the importance of taking 100% responsibility. Again, just because you get a diagnosis doesn't mean you're done. Like Dr. Horowitz said on the show, the first time he was on, his MD stands for medical detective. And I love that about him, that even though he knows so much and he's been you know, trained, he also goes beyond what he, was, what he learned in school. Um, we've had wonderful conversations about intuition. Uh, we've had wonderful conversations about you know, listening to your body. It's not just the diagnosis. It's what will we do to 
Feel Better. How Can I Get Better is the name of the book. If you call 407-373-5959, be the 10th caller to leave a message or text her to text me, How Can I Get Better? I want the book. You will get a free copy of this book. And so I want to encourage you to go to whenyouneedafriend.com. This is where we talk about responsibility, the responsibility of that leads you to empowerment and freedom. And so I want to encourage you to go to whenyouneedafriend.com. And once you do that, all the shows will be sent to you on your tablet or your phone. I want you to do me a favor while you're there. I want you to check out my sponsors because without my sponsors, the show would not be on the air. So go to whenyouneedafriend.com, just check out my sponsorship page and see how you can support my sponsors the way they're supporting the show. And I want to also encourage you to like me on my social media. And when you go to whenyouneedafriend.com, all my social media, my YouTube, you just click on it. It's that easy. And finally, last but not least, you can call leave a message, 407-373-5959. Today we have Dr. Richard Horowitz and we're talking about healing our gut. What are the histamine reactions that could be causing your disease? And so we can, we have the power. The creator that created us gave us the power to heal ourselves as well. So Dr. Horowitz, what is it about us that when we hear a diagnosis, we're so trained to take that pill and say, ah, I'm done. I just need to take the pill and the symptoms will go away. What do you say about that? Well, I mean, medicines obviously have their place. And I think a lot of the advances we have, clearly they're very, very helpful and life-saving. But I think where we haven't balanced it in medicine necessarily adequately is we're not always getting to the source or sources Mm -hmm. of why people are sick. So for example, my concern is there's 18 million people, 5% of the US population that has chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia, Mm -hmm. or over 50 million Americans that have autoimmune diseases. And what's not made clear to people is that, for example, bacteria like Lyme disease, environmental toxins like mercury, asbestos, BPA, plastics, pesticizers, these have all been linked up to autoimmune reactions, as have the Lyme bacteria. But the microbiome of the gut is also linked up to inflammatory reactions and autoimmunity. So in medicine, we've been taught this disease model of one cause, one disease. Mm -hmm. And really the model that I use called the MSIDS model, multiple systemic infectious disease syndrome, is that there's up to 16 reasons in some people why we stay ill. So the medications can be necessary, life-saving, but the trick, I believe, is you've got to get to the sources of why most people are sick. And in the case of the gut, I think we've really ignored, uh, for example, the role. And a good example is I had a patient come in with Crohn's disease, Mm -hmm. which is an inflammatory reaction of the bowels. And he was on a drug, 6-MP, 6-mercaptopurine. It's a classic drug used for Crohn's. He still was breaking through with diarrhea and blood in the stools, fatigue. Mm -hmm. Well, we checked him for mineral levels, and he was mineral deficient because he had diarrhea and was losing minerals. He also had leaky gut meaning from the inflammation in his gut, when he was eating foods, large particles, macromolecules were getting into his bloodstream and he was getting allergic reactions. So we did a food allergy panel for him and found that he was allergic to over 40 different foods. Wow. So so we got him off his allergic foods. We replaced the minerals. We basically treated his leaky gut using certain products like glutamine. Um, There's a product I use from a company called Zymogen, which is in Florida. Um, called OptiCleanse GHI, and certain um, doctors who practice functional medicine will use this. We use phospholipid um, high-dose probiotics, digestive enzymes, um, sometimes orange oil, avoid the allergic foods, you know, treat people for candida, um, decrease inflammation in the gut using monolaurin, lauricidin, it's a coconut oil extract, or garlic, oregano oil, These can all be effective in healing the gut, bringing down candida. And when we did this for this gentleman and treated his Lyme, we got him off his Crohn's drugs. He no longer has any symptoms of Crohn's. And when he goes for a colonoscopy, there are absolutely no signs of inflammation in his gut. And all it was, was basically getting off the allergic foods, healing the gut, replacing the minerals, treating the Lyme because Lyme causes inflammatory molecules in the body. In fact, the same ones that are produced during Crohn's disease. Wow. So if 
It's like the lime was putting gasoline on the fire. We had to treat all the overlapping sources. And we also know even with Crohn's disease that there have been bacteria like mycoplasma species that have been associated with Crohn's. So it's complex. It's not just about taking a pill for inflammatory bowel. Sure. It's not just about taking a proton pump inhibitor when you have reflux. We've had people get off their allergic foods and their reflux goes away. Yeah. So you have to understand that you know doctors are well-meaning and these drugs can certainly be helpful and life-saving, but you also have to balance it by getting to the source of why many people are staying ill. Absolutely. You know, when I say you can take a pill, you can take responsibility, I am 100% there with you. It's not that I am against pills, and I've said this before. It's not that I'm against pills. I am for doing whatever it takes to heal naturally. Allow the body to heal naturally. The body wants to heal. It shows us when we cut our finger or have a paper cut, those paper cuts that are just so aggravating. But within a short period of time, all those cells are going, hey, we know what to do. We know what to do. But if we start messing with it, that's when we stop the flow to occur. So let's talk about probiotics here because there is a, and, and there's so much I want to talk to you about candida because there's a lot of men who have candida. You know, they think that candida is just for women and yeast infections and things like that. But can men get candida too? Oh, absolutely. In fact, I've, I've had it myself. So is my wife. So of many people I know basically because my stepfather growing up was a surgeon. I took antibiotics a lot as a child mm -hmm. and nobody ever gave me probiotics or said eat yogurt, right? When you were taking these antibiotics. So I got a yeast overgrowth in my colon. And I found that when I treated it, got off carbs, got off simple sugars and treated it, um, my energy level, my headaches got much better. So <clears throat> it's very necessary to use the right bacteria, the right probiotics. Yes, yes. let's talk And about not that. just when we're taking mm -hmm. antibiotics, but What's surprising is we have epidemics of a type of bacteria uh, called Clostridium difficile, C. diff. We have epidemics of this in the hospitals across the United States. And what's astonishing is no one has ever statistically, I've never seen this done, it's never been published, where they've used high-dose probiotics in the hospitals on a regular basis, <laughs> including a type of a yeast, a type of a beneficial yeast called Saccharomyces boulardii. It has been published in the medical literature that it keeps down C. diff diarrhea. So the way that I protect people's guts when I'm giving them antibiotics for Lyme disease is I'm giving them this beneficial yeast called Saccharomyces boulardii, and I'm giving them very high dose probiotics. Um, the ones that I generally use are from master supplements like Trubifido, um, is Bifidobacterium. They found, for example, that Bifidobacterium colonized the lower intestine they help your immune system, they decrease inflammation, um, they help with functional bowel disorders like irritable bowel. So we use Therilac, we use Trubifido, we use Ultraflora DF um, from Metagenics. We combine different strains of probiotics, but we find that when we combine Acidophilus and Bifidobacterium with these healthy type of yeast, we can protect the colon with antibiotic use. And they've even shown in some children with autism who have the wrong bacteria in the gut that produce something called propionic acid, that once you change the bacteria in the gut in these autistic kids, some of these kids, their brains start working better just by giving them high-dose probiotics and some even with probiotic enemas. Um, David Perlmutter is a very well-known neurologist. He's been on the show, yeah. Yes, and, and David had actually shared this years ago in videos where he showed these young children with uh, who were on the spectrum, who did these probiotic enemas, getting rid of these types of bacteria that were causing propionic acid, and the behavior of these children was definitely different. Yeah, he, he talked about fecal transplantation. I'm like, yeah. what? And that so, was probably, know, yeah, that, a lot of people listened to that show. So, you know, the fecal transplantation, I think, is it's going to be important in the future because we've already published that you can reverse insulin resistance, glucose intolerance, diabetes, C. diff, but they've also shown that these bacteria are helpful for obesity. They're helpful for menstrual cramps. They're helpful for people's immune systems that don't fight infections. Like they've already know the strains of these bacteria in the gut, which yes. are so helpful.
Absolutely. And we're going to continue talking about all these issues and more when we return with Dr. Richard Horowitz. 407-373-5959 gets you a copy of How Can I Get Better? So make sure you're calling and texting. This is not while you're driving. This is, uh, we're going to continue our conversation worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com. We'll be right here waiting for you. OMG. Now, you mentioned so much about probiotics, good probiotics, bad probiotics, but when you walk into a a store, you see how um, you you see all these different probiotics or prebiotics are there do you have a go-to brand that you 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 use or do you not want to say it on the air well no in fact master supplements is is online master supplements makes therolac and true bifido um they make something called true flora which is for candida the reason i use them is my number one <clears throat> there's over a hundred scientific studies of the five bacteria that are in therolac that in people that lived the longest on the planet, the octogenarians, uh-huh. these were the bacteria they found in the colons of these people. And what they did in this probiotic is they encapsulated it in a sodium alginate coat so the stomach acid can't destroy it. The stomach acid destroys 90% of your probiotics. Uh-huh. So what they did in master supplements is they um, enrobed it. They put something around it to protect it from the stomach acid. And they have an FDA patent that 95% gets into the small intestine. Wow. So it's called Master Supplements. Master Supplements is the name of the company. It's, not- it's online. You can buy them online. And, and Therolac and True Bifido are some of my favorites that I use um, along with True Flora, which is for Candida. Okay. So True Florida, Flora is for Candida, but you can take that along with... Um, Therolac. 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 And True Bifido. True... Bifido. Bifido. So there's trillions, 50 billions. I mean, uh, does it matter how many bacteria? So you- they, have it, they have at least 30 to 40 billion in every capsule. Um, and for example, some people like VSL3, which you can even get by prescription. VSL3 is about 350 billion, but, 10, but only 10% gets through into your intestine. So master supplements, it's about the same and we have found that, for example, with people with antibiotic-associated diarrhea, if we give them a bottle over two days, it actually replaces 1% of the microbiome of your gut. With and that's a lot bottle. if you have trillions of cells, right? So, yeah. So if you take an entire bottle in two days, you replace 1% of these healthy bacteria. And we've been able to reverse diarrhea in some people using that type of uh, an approach. So, you know, but I, don't get me wrong. There are other companies that are still good. Yes, um, Zymogen yes. in Florida makes Probiomax. There are many that are good. We just have found certain of these, the scientific studies are so strong that I recommend them. So I like Probiomax, um, which is by Zymogen. Ultraflora is still a good brand. Um, some of the spore-based probiotics have also been helpful. Um, one of the, the last things we should also finish up with on the show yes. is how to evaluate your GI health using stool testing called a CDSA, a Comprehensive Digestive Stool Analysis. Okay, we'll do so that. So we should discuss that so people know how to test it. Here we go. I didn't hear you. I'll be right here waiting for you. You can text Lillian McDermott or leave her a voicemail at 407-373-5959. Once again, here's Lillian. And I'm loving all these texts, but keep on texting because I am not counting. We may or may not be at the 10th caller. So if you want this book, How Can I Get Better? Call 407-373-5959. Leave a message or text. I take the, the time that it, the call comes in and I evaluate which one is the 10th caller or texter. So 407-373-5959 will get you a free copy of Dr. Richard Horowitz's book. And it's simple and easy to follow. He's got a guideline 16-step process to get better. And so Dr. Horowitz, now let's talk about, oh gosh, we talked about um, the probiotics off the air. And um, just really quickly, uh, if somebody will probiotics alone heal your gut? Um, It's not enough for many people that have, for example, leaky gut, meaning you've taken antibiotics Mm -hmm. over time. You might have candida. 
Um, they have found, for example, that certain environmental toxins, mercury will affect leaky gut. So a lot of people do need to use glutamine, which is in a lot of the foods we eat, but it can be obtained as a nutritional supplement. That helps to heal both the upper and lower gut. Um, again, we were talking about borage oil, proper probiotics. Um, the real key here is that probiotics are usually not going to be enough. If you have candida overgrowth, you may need garlic, you may need oregano oil, um, you might need a medication like nystatin or fluconazole, diflucan. So a lot of times we will combine herbal products, we will combine medication to lower candida, balance the microbiome of the gut, heal it with glutamine. If you're deficient in stomach acid, there's a test called the Heidelberg acid test. Mm -hmm. um, betaine hydrochloride can actually be taken and help. Um, so there are many ways that you can heal the gut, but you've got to find out if you have H. pylori, if you mm -hmm. have a bacteria in the gut that causes gastritis, yes. which has been associated with gastric cancer. You have to find out if you have the wrong types of bacteria in the gut, like C. diff causing diarrhea, right? So you, you need to evaluate it. Sure. And there are, there are tests, some of which are standard laboratory tests, stool cultures and sensitivities, checking for parasites. But there is a very useful test that functional medicine doctors use called the CDSA, Comprehensive Digestive Stool Analysis. And this is usually done by certain functional medical laboratories like Genova Diagnostics, Doctors Data, which is in Chicago. And what this test will do is you send a stool specimen and they will check what type of bacteria are in your gut. Do you have H. pylori? Do you have Shigella, E. coli, Campylobacter, C. diff? They'll check for these different bacteria. They'll check for yeast. They'll check for parasites. Um, they'll check to see if you have inflammation. So for example, if you have Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, which is an inflammatory disease of the colon, there are markers that this CDSA test will pick up called eosinophil protein X, mm -hmm. lactoferrin, calprotectin. So they look for these inflammatory markers that you get with inflammatory bowel, but you don't get with irritable bowel. So irritable bowel is when people might say, I've got alternating constipation and diarrhea. I have a lot of gas and bloating, right? Now that can be due to SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. It can be due to stress, but also the wrong bacteria. Mm -hmm. So they'll check inflammation. They'll check for um, if you need pancreatic enzymes. We found people that are enzyme deficient. They have gas and bloating because um, they just don't have enough amylase or lipase. And then you give them enzymes and they digest the food and the gas and bloating gets better. So the CDSA is important and people should also know that there are breath tests that you can do at home. So you could ask your doctor, there are companies that will ship breath tests to you and you can check a breath test for H. pylori to see if you're active with it in your stomach. Mm -hmm. You can check if you have fructose intolerance, you're eating fruit and all of a sudden you get gas and bloating, mm. or you have lactose intolerance, right? You're eating dairy and you're getting gas and bloating. Um, you have leaky gut, you've taken antibiotics or have candida, and now you're sensitive to foods. You can do breath tests to evaluate all these different conditions with a CDSA, and that will give you a very good idea of what's going on in the colon, and then you can take the proper steps to heal the gut. Okay, so CDSA is a stool test. Is it expensive? I think it's a few hundred dollars. Um, some of the insurance companies will partially pay for that test. Mm -hmm. um, and it can be very useful because you will pick up, as I said, overgrowth of yeast, the wrong type of bacteria, missing enzymes, finding parasites. It's surprising actually how many things you'll find on one of these tests as, for example, also using the breath testing. Um, and, so it's and the good. breath test and the breath test is uh, how much is a test like that? Uh, they're about one hundred and twenty-five dollars per breath test on the average. And again, you can speak to your doctors about companies that will do these type of breath tests. That's amazing because you know many of us go through life thinking, okay, there's no blood test for this, so therefore I'm not going to be able to test. It's just about you know looking at you and and treating your symptoms with a pill. But this is actual evidence that you can learn 
um, what is going on, what kind, because whatever you eat is going to come out on the other end. That's hopefully the way it goes. But uh, if we have st um, tests like the CDSA that we can do, that's going to eliminate a lot of the guesswork, Dr. Horowitz. Why aren't, why aren't all doctors ordering this when people are sick? Well, you know, the problem is, is that we learn a lot in medical school, but they also tell you in medical school that everything you learn, probably half of it's going to be changing every five to 10 years. <laughs> there's, a, there's an area of medicine called functional medicine or yes. integrative medicine. Yes. It's, we learned it in med school in a sense. It's like the biochemistry of the body. But the problem is, is that we didn't learn it in enough detail that we can really apply it as clinicians in a useful manner. So it's a whole nother subset of learning that doctors really need to do. And what my book does in both why can't I get better and how can I get better is it explains to you the functional medicine approach, which is based on very hard science, right? It's all good published in the medical literature. It's there, but it's very useful because it will complement what your doctor is doing to try and get you better. So, you know, a gastroenterologist friend of mine, when he read my book, I used to send him people to do endoscopies and colonoscopies. He had never heard of many of these tests yeah. and then started using them, you know, yeah. after I pointed it out to him and he found in fact that they were very useful That's for some amazing. of these people that had functional bowel disorders. So we found another use for your book, which is for those of you, my listening friends that love your doctors and want to stay with your doctors, buy them a copy of How Can I Get Better? Or you can be the 10th caller or texter at 407-373-5959 and get a free copy. Amazing. You can give them a Christmas present and it be, uh, well, you'll probably want to keep it for yourself and you can buy the doctor another one. But the, if you want to learn more about Dr. Horowitz, he has his own website. It's called CanGetBetter.com. CanGetBetter.com. Dr. Horowitz, it's amazing um, the stuff that you know. And, and it's beyond what you were taught. As you talked about functional integrative medicine, you really have gone beyond. As a matter of fact, I, I still kind of get a kick out of the fact that you went to Dr. Mona Lisa Schultz uh, Medical Intuition. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the first time you and I spoke. And uh, I was just about to go to her course and you told me, she says a word to gut it, gut it. And she comes on the show and she says it too. But um, I thought every time I heard gut it, I thought of you. And I'm thinking how amazing it is to find a doctor that goes beyond what you were taught. You could have said, this is what I was taught and I'm not gonna learn anymore uh, because you know it all. But the reality is we don't know what we don't know and I'm so grateful to you for saying, you know what, I don't know everything, so I'm gonna be a curious student of life. So thank you so much for that. Oh, it's, it's my pleasure. And you know, the thing about medicine is it's constantly evolving and changing and people need to realize there is the art of medicine and the science of medicine. So a lot of this is really taking a proper history. And that's why in the show, when I was telling people earlier, listen to your body, mm -hmm. listen carefully to the signs and symptoms. If you're eating the wrong foods, you, you listen to your body. Do I get congested? Do I sneeze? Do I get tightness in the chest? Do I itch? Do I get headaches? Do I fall asleep? Do I get gas and bloating? Do I get diarrhea? Listen carefully, and then you will be able to work with your doctor in a healthy partnership to figure out exactly how to get better. Amazing. Dr. Horowitz, I, I'm just in awe. I remember getting your book, and it sat on my desk for a long time because I'm really busy, but I, the best thing I did was pick up that book and look at it and go, OMG, we got to get this guy on the show. Thank you so much, Dr. Horowitz, for your dedication and for coming on. I'm looking forward to our next conversation. We'll have Very to determine one. what that will be after the show. And to you, my listening friend, now that you know about histamine reactions, what are you willing to do to get better? What are you going to do? It's time to shh, 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 shh. listen, listen to your body. And remember, I'll be right here waiting for you worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com. This is Lily McDermott wishing you love, peace, joy, and unexpected abundance. Make it the best day ever. ever. Good job, Dr. Horowitz. Right on cue, right on cue. Okay, I just want to say again, congratulations for your uh, being appointed to the Federal Tick-Borne Working Group. Um, I know you will do great things. Um, and so I hope that, and I, I pray 
for you for wisdom for stamina because you're going to be hitting with some heavy hitters or working with some heavy hitters and i pray that you will be able to change them as opposed to them change you it's uh it's going to be challenging because a lot of these people i think Mm -hmm. have fixed ideas on what to do so it is going to be an interesting experience and um, already the line groups who've been contacting me have a lot of concerns about how the committee's going to go but Look, at least I have a voice in that. Whether they, what they do with my voice is up to them, but I'm actually the only person on the committee, the only one that has experience treating over 12,000 chronically ill people with tick-borne. So the issue is no matter what you've read in the medical literature, no matter what you've seen, it's different than when you've seen these patients day to day. So it, it will be interesting to see whether they're open-minded and want to work in a collaborative fashion, but I hope so. I, I do too. I, I really do. Because it is hopeful to me that someone like you will be influencing our government. Uh, but I know that the pharmaceutical industry has really deep pockets. And I know the food industry also has some heavy, deep pockets. So um, I know that if there's anything that you need on my end, I know I'm just a little fish, uh, but I, I am more than happy to help you swim um, in deeper waters, because you re- we really do need to get this information out, and I'm grateful. Is there anything that you would like to add to the show um, that we weren't able to 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 talk about? Like, for example, for me, I <clears throat> well, I'll I'll let you answer that, but I want you to also I want to say that I am a believer that I am more important than a piece of meat, or more important than dessert, or more important. I I don't believe that I'm doing without, I am embracing good health. So with that in mind, when I saw the histamine diet, and that's the majority of what I eat, and I just haven't had the time to really seriously think, what would my life be like? What would I eat without the things that are just essential in my diet? I have to relearn how to eat, and I'm okay with that. What advice do you have for people who you know are like me that have done everything we have done to eliminate I, I don't eat wheat, I don't eat dairy, I don't eat sugar, um, but you know, what can you, what are the pep words to, to get us motivated to eliminate even more? So I, I think what it comes down to is that this is really a precious human life. This is a really unusual opportunity that we have to have this precious human body and we need to keep it in good health because when you lose your health, really you you lose everything. So what it comes down to, I think, is people have to get past instant gratification. They have to have the big viewpoint that I have loved ones who are depending on me. I have a precious life where I have to do good in this world. And I think people just need to take it seriously and understand that the short-term gratification, if we keep doing that, it's okay to go off every once in a while. It's not a problem. And clearly not everyone is so super sensitive to these foods, right? Some Mm -hmm. people genetically and otherwise can handle them. But I do find the majority of people, the food is playing a very important role. And I think it's important for people from a motivational level to understand that um, don't take your health for granted. As I watch people get older and I watch what happens, things happen to them and you've got to start taking care of yourself because the gut, if you don't control the inflammatory reaction, which starts in the gut and starts with food, that inflammatory reaction has now been linked up to almost every chronic disease that we suffer from, from Alzheimer's to Parkinson's to strokes, to heart attacks, to cancer, it's inflammation. So you want to control the inflammatory response. And one of the you know, common denominators that's in my book is you've got to get to the underlying sources of the inflammation. The yes. gut is, happens to be one important one. Yeah. And I do eat a lot of nuts, walnuts, but my nuts are raw and I soak them and I do all the things that I thought was, and it's like learning a new truth all over again. I am willing to do it. I'm willing to do it. And with you by my side, I, I think I'll, I know I'll be very successful. I want to talk about, um, you know, I had uh, Dr. Um, Perlmutter on my show and we talked about fecal transplantation uh, or fecal microbiota p- transplantation. And I asked Dr. Perlmutter, who is providing the, um, the, the fecal matter? And he said, MIT, right? MIT, um, students at MIT. And I'm thinking, well, what kind of foods do they eat to have such healthy um, bacteria? And what are they doing to make sure that their bacteria is better than what uh, my bacteria is? And, you know, he couldn't tell me a lot about that. Um, he said that there's, it's still early, but that it's, it's working. Mm-hmm. 
But yeah. why yeah. is it working? Yeah, I don't know that anybody's examined in detail specifically where yeah, they're getting it from. It's important. Um, sometimes they will take um, fecal transplants from, like, for example, your cousin or your um, a spouse or someone. They will sometimes evaluate it to see if they can use it in a fecal transplant. Um, and, and I do think in the future, this is going to be used a lot more frequently, not just for Clostridium difficile, but for many other metabolic diseases. Because uh, as I said earlier, I mean, it's being linked up to cardiovascular, to autoimmune, um, to neuropsychiatric disease. So we're really just on the forefront mm -hmm. of starting to discover the role of the microbiome in health. People need to realize that a broad-based diet with plants and vegetables and probiotics and keeping down sugar, there are just certain basic things you need to do to keep it healthy. But you know, in your case, Lillian, it doesn't mean you have to be off histamine. What it means is you have to see whether you're histamine sensitive and whether those foods affect you. So, so I'm so, thinking about taking that blood test. So it's called a histamine level. Right. So a histamine level, tryptase, tryptase. and chromogranin A. And th those are in my book. They're in, they're in the chapters under, I think, allergies or the GI system. Okay. Um, and those, those are standard blood tests that can be done from any local laboratory. Is it now, those, to those, do? Yeah, no, no, they're covered. But the, the thing, realize though, is it won't always pick it up on one test. Like, you know, sometimes the histamine will be normal. Sometimes it's high. If you're on Claritin or Allegra or Zyrtec, that blood histamine, yeah. right, it could affect it. So just know that one test won't necessarily completely determine. Um, but those tests are more specific for mast cell um, or mastocytosis. You could still have a low level histamine sensitivity where you don't have, for example, tryptase or chromogranin A levels that are high. So again, what it depends on is my wife, for example, is a great example. She had migraines and um, she couldn't get past the migraines or stomach pain. And we recently retested her in the bloods. Her histamine level was high, right? And her chromogranin A was high. She had mast cell. And when she gets off these foods, her stomach pain goes away and the migraines go away. Otherwise, she's using Imitrex and these drugs for migraines. That's awful. So, yeah. So it's not for everyone. Like some people's headaches is hypoglycemia with blood sugar swings, but may not be related to histamine. Some people's headaches might be from yeast, from candida, but not related to histamine. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, it's, it's completely individualized. And that's why, you know, medicine really is going towards a personalized precision medical model. We just have to kind of know what to scroll through in the possibilities so people know what to look at to discover whether, is it sugar? Is it yeast? Is it histamine, right? Is it the wrong microbiome of bacteria that are in my gut? You, you go through it piece by piece to determine what might be going on. And the CDSA and the breath testing will help you in that process. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do the CDSA. I'm going to do the blood test. Let me ask you the symptoms um, because there's a lot of men out there that um, have, or men and women, but, but men in particular that don't even think that they could get yeast, uh, candida overgrowth. What are some of the symptoms of candida overgrowth for, you know, let's not, let's, let's just focus on men. So it's, it's actually the same as you get in a lot of these uh, disorders like histamine, people will be tired. They can have gas and bloating in the gut, especially if you eat simple carbohydrates. So if you're someone with candida as a man, um, you could get a coated tongue, you could get gas and bloating. Women, of course, will get more of a vaginitis and vaginal discharge. But men, it's usually gas and bloating or a change in the smell, actually, of the stool. Mm -hmm. You can tell when you've eaten the wrong foods if you're being sensitive to your body. Um, but it can be headaches. It can be brain fog. It can bring out muscle and joint pain. What about congestion and snoring and that? Would that be associated? It, it can be, although a lot of times that's probably candida with histamine. Anytime you get nasal congestion that's usually a histamine reaction. Mm. So, um, but, but remember a lot of these things overlap. Like I have candida and histamine. Some people might have candida without histamine or histamine without candida. So it, it's kind of all over the map, but, um, but you know, the, the thing about candida, even in men, it will look like symptoms of chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia for some people, or it might mm. look like, like irritable bowel, right? So you have to just know that if your doctor is giving you a label for a disease, you got to just get back to the underlying sources with Very an good. S of why people may be having their symptoms. Very good. Dr. Richard Horowitz, it's always amazing. I'm looking forward to our next conversation. I know we hadn't had you in October. And I'm like, what, what's up with Dr. Horowitz? Why would, would we have you here? But I'm glad that you're here. And I hope you had a happy Thanksgiving and that you will have an incredible holiday. I know I'll, I'll hope to see you before 
um, the end of the year. Thank you, Lily. It's been a real pleasure. And uh, we'll come up with another topic at some point. With I know, I know. And thank you, my viewers, for watching today. I hope that I know, I know that you have a lot to do at this point. So get to work. Thank you for um, watching and I look forward to the next time we meet.